Welcome back, everyone. Let's talk about fireflies. So the Lampyrids are the fireflies. These are small bioluminescent beetles, usually, uh, sometimes called lightning bugs, sometimes called glow worms. And there are quite a few of them, about 2,000 worldwide. And in the U.S. and Canada, there's about 200 species, generally within five, maybe six subfamilies. They're generally easily recognizable. They are usually some sort of mixture of coloration of yellow, orange, and black, uh, but not always. And frequently they have a lantern or a light organ on the tip of their abdomen. But again, not always. Not all of the fireflies, the Lampyrids, are bioluminescent, so not all of them can glow. Uh, but when they do have this lantern, it's usually the last two or three abdominal sternites, which are modified into these light-emitting organs. Those which can emit light usually use these flashes as a type of courting signal uh, or sometimes to attract prey and also as a warning to predators. Many of the fireflies, the Lampyrids, are poisonous, so they use this glowing as a kind of aposematic warning. During the daytime, you can usually find the adults in vegetation. The larvae are also usually buried in like leaves or in long, on long grasses, sometimes in the uh, bark layer of trees, things like that. The larvae are predaceous. Most of the time, they're associated with damp sorts of soil or damp plant ma material, things like that, because they tend to hunt a lot of soft-bodied things. So soft-bodied insects, but also a lot of the time they're feeding on snails or slugs or worms. The larvae tend to be very small, uh, but long-lived, so you'll have a, they'll be alive for a couple of years before they pupate into adults. But the adults generally don't feed, so all of the feeding is done during this larval stage. Lampyrids are generally recognizable as adults by their elongated, soft-bodied appearance. When they have elytra, the elytra are usually soft and leathery. Not all of the fireflies have elytra. Some, especially in the females, uh, some females will either be brachypterous or they will be lacking wings entirely. Generally speaking, their heads are hidden under their pronotum, and the females, if they are of the type without wings, they frequently have a larva form or something similar to a larva form appearance. The larvae themselves frequently look uh, a bit like a large trilobite. They're kind of strange looking for beetles. As far as the taxonomy goes, like I mentioned at the beginning, there are, generally speaking, five, maybe six subfamilies. I say five, maybe six because the Trotony are kind of weird. There are two genera within the Trotony within uh, North America, north of Mexico. Tarotus, which is the namesake for this. And also there's another genus called Polyclassus. And the genus Polyclassus may or may not be in this subfamily. It may be its own thing. It's still kind of up in the air what this is. But the Trotony and the Ototretony are the most uh, primitive of the fireflies within North America. And generally, it's two genera and one genera for the Ototretony, uh, Brachylampus. Most of the Ototretony are associated with Asia. There's only one genus of the Ototretines in North America. As for the Lamprohizony, again, there's only one genus within North America, Fauceus. Uh, and this group, I believe, is primarily associated with Europe. So you'll find more species over there. Uh, but within North America, almost all of the species are in these two groups here, the Lampyrini and the Futurini. And this is also where you find the flashing fireflies. These are the fireflies that you see at night flying about uh, twinkling at each other. A lot of other fireflies that don't bioluminesce are primarily active during the day. For, but for the Lampyrini and the Futurini, like I said, these are the flashing fireflies, which uh, there are three large genera associated with the flashing fireflies. And this is Futurus, Fatinus, and Pyroctamina. Futurus is uh, w the largest group of the Futurini, which you can see it in the name. There's only one other genus within the Futurini in North America, which isn't Futurus. But Fatinus and Pyroctamina are both in the Lampyrini. The Lampyrini are by far the largest group of Lampyrids within North America, there's something like 110 species within the subfamily Lampyrini, whereas within the Fraterni, there are only 50 species, um, but most of them are these Fraterus bioluminescent species. This here is a great example of the Trotony. 
And this is one of the more primitive subfamilies within North America. Pteratus obscuripennis obscure is the only species within this genus in North America. It's primarily found out west. And they're relatively easy to identify because they have these enormous branched antennae. Uh, and most of the fireflies within North America do not have branched antennae. And so this is kind of a unique sort of characteristic. You will also find small branches on polyclassus, although uh, they are not as ornate as this. Otherwise, a fairly easy firefly to recognize. For the Otretini, I could not find a good photo to save my life, although their antennal segments are not branched, and generally their pronotum, like what you see here in the Tarotini, is very small. You have a relatively small, non-flared uh, pronotum in both the Tarotini and within the Ototretini, so uh, Brachylampus would be the genus. But these are fairly uncommon uh, genera of the Lampyards within North America. For the Lamprohizini, the genus that is associated with North America is Phausus, and these are sometimes called ghost fireflies. The Phausius fireflies are relatively easy to identify because they have these large, clear windows in the back of their pronotum. They, again, don't have branched antennae. It's, it's a much more simple antennae. And they don't have much flaring on their pronotum. But the presence of these two large uh, window pane like holes in the pronotum, and these aren't holes holes, they're just a, a clearing of the pronotum, allows their eyes to be visible from through the pronotum. And if you were to flip this guy over, you can see he has enormous eyes. A lot of the fireflies have these enormous bulbous eyes because they're so visually oriented, especially if they're looking for uh, flickering females, things like that. But Phalseus is the only genus within the Lamprohizini within North America. Again, fairly easy to identify through their pronotal, st pronotal structures. At this point, we have to get into the Lampyrini and the Faturini. And this becomes a little more difficult because this is where the majority of the species in North America are. The Lampyrini, there are 15 genera and 110 species. And the, for the Faturini, there are only two genera, but almost all of them are within the genus Faturus, all 50 of their species. Faturus and uh, Fatinus. So this is Fatinus. This is Faturus. Are uh, kind of the two that get talked about the most often because Faturus is frequently predatory on Fatinus, and the females of Faturus can mimic the mating signals of Fatinus in order to draw in Fatinus males to eat them. But this is Faturus, and uh, this particular genus tends to have this sort of hump-backed. Uh, side profile appearance, which helps in identifying them. Generally, they have a very explanate or flared pronotum. So you can see here how uh, there's kind of a, a thin tapered-like effect onto the pronotum, and it's generally this sort of half moon shaped. And so it is relatively easy to figure out that you're dealing with a Faturus, uh, although there are, again, a lot of species of Faturus in the United States. They generally have bipronged tarsal claws, which uh, if you have a microscope, you can use that to help you identify them. Uh, but frequently, if you're in the field, you're not going to be able to use that. The other thing that you can do to distinguish Faturus and Fatinus is their blinking patterns. Uh, Fatinus has a very distinct blinking pattern. Faturus is a little uh, wo wonky because they will tend to attract Fatinus in order to predate them. Fatinus here, a part of the Lampyrini, uh, they generally also have this explanate sort of pronotum in that uh, the edges kind of get flared out, but they don't have a humpback appearance. Their body is much more straight. The pronotum is variable in shape. It's not always half mooned. Sometimes it has pointy edges, which you can kind of see here. Sometimes the if you look at this pronotum, the pronotum is kind of flared upwards. That is sometimes seen within the fatinus. Within the uh, lampyrine, lampyrines, you also have the group uh, Pyroctamina, which is another bioluminescent blinking lightning bug. What is cool with these three groups, the Pyroctamina, Faturus, and Fatinus, they actually produce different colored lights. And so if you are looking at them flashing in your yard or something, you might be able to tell them apart just from their coloration. Faturus generally flashes 
a kind of um, neon green color, kind of a yellow green. So, and they tend towards that green color. But Tynus, here, this guy, tends to flash a clear yellow. And this is kind of what people think of when they think of a firefly. Whereas Pyroctamina tends to flash a, an amber-orange color. Uh, growing up, we had a lot of fireflies. And I would say that just from memory, they were probably mostly Futurus because I do remember them being primarily green in my area. You also have glowworms within the, the Lampyrids. Generally speaking, glowworms can either refer to the larvae of some of the fireflies, or it refers to adult female flower fireflies, which don't have wings and which signal from generally low vegetation in order for non-bioluminescent males to find them. So you either have the kind of blinking Futurus Fatinus pyroctamina, which the males and females will communicate with each other through blinking. You have the glowworms in which the females are wingless and will blink from vegetation and the non-bioluminescent males will come to them. Or you will have something like the uh, non-bioluminescent males and females, uh, which are usually day flying and will communicate through uh, pheromone signaling. Generally, all of the life stages of the Lampyrids are capable of bioluminescence. This is a larva. This is what I mean by they're kind of trilobite looking. They have these spiky uh, abdominal and thoracic segments. Uh, the, the larvae are also called glowworms. They are capable of emitting their own light. Eggs laid by the females are frequently covered in a coating of bioluminescent uh, material, which acts as an aposematic warning to predators because there are a lot of poisonous materials that the female deposits onto the eggs. And then as the embryo develops in the egg, they develop their own lanterns, their larval state lanterns, and so they can glow from within the egg. The pupae are also capable of this sort of glowing. So all life stages of the bioluminescent species are capable of bioluminescing. Generally, pupation from the larvae occur in earthen cells. Sometimes they'll build cells on the surface, generally in these wet areas again. And they are generally very long-lived. So the larval and pupil development can take multiple years. And then the adults may live for a month, uh, a month or two in the summer, generally speaking. One of the other ways that you can distinguish various species of firefly is their mating signals. They are... Generally speaking, especially with the Fatinus and the Pyroctamina, um, they will have defined uh, a blipping pattern. I don't know what you call this, a flashing pattern. Uh, and so if you're very familiar with the fireflies in your area, you will be able to tell them just uh, from the lights that uh, the light signals that they are emitting. So it's kind of like Morse code where every second or half second you'll have a series of blips. Or um, like with Fatinus pyralis, they have this J shape. So they start the blink and then fly upward and, and making these little Js in the sky. For Futurus, it's a little more difficult because they are predatory and some of them predate on Fatinus. They will change their signal depending on whether they're trying to mate or whether they're trying to lure in prey. So I'm going to stop there for now. I am planning on doing some more sections on Firefly Taxonomy, if you guys are interested, uh, leave a comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later.